What's up everyone? I am here with a chassis update and this time I'm going to accommodate both the Hoffman board, which I had my original design, uh, eyelets, and that's in yellow, as well as the PCBs, where the standoffs are included. So these are one-for-one -one standoff locations, uh, the beauty of AutoCAD. Uh, Erwin sent me over his uh, design layout for these, it's just the, you know, the outside of the files, um, and the coordinates for the PCB standoff locations. And I believe that they work still with the Hoffman uh, boards as well. So which is pretty cool. So if you're interested in going the eyelet route, you can still do that, you know, by purchasing um, the eyelets from Hoffman, or you can make them yourself using my do-it-yourself layout, or you can go PCB route, um, which is where I'm going next. Some of the chassis design updates is to I move these pin uh, these nine pins over because if you remember my uh, first video, I had to notch out over here the edge of the uh, eyelet board to accommodate here, which is supposed to be a mock-up of where the Switchcraft 114BX uh, input jack kind of sticks out. Now we have all the proper clearance. The FET over here, here's some holes for where this FET standoffs are, um, are accounted for and will fit now in this space without having to be so tight like mine was. Mine was super tight. It works. It sounds great. I'm very happy with it still. I play my amp whenever I have the time to play the amp, and I'm not designing the, the next amp or building in the next amp. Um, what I did do is that also over here, the rectifier board, the bias and rectifier board would stay, be over here. To make it easier on the fabricator so there's no uh, question about which way these these vertical supports go, I mirrored the design. So it doesn't matter. I, you know, it's an extra hole or two, um, but it's going to be a lot easier for the fabricator. Just drop this in, measure in, you know, half an inch, and then put these in place, and then we got, we're good to go. Uh, weld them in, in place. So I'm trying to think what other uh, updates. Oh, one big update is the uh, cutout for the transformer. The power transformer is right here. It's bigger. It's the size. It's classic tone. Uh, classic tones recommendation for cutout hole. So now we don't have to take apart our power uh, transformers anymore. I moved over the uh, reverb board slightly. I had oscillation. I had to be very careful with where I was bringing um, the wires going to and from the RCA jacks. So I moved those over. In, under the board, which I believe is where the real Steel String Singer's boards are now, or where those RCAs are. Um, and then here, one, two, is the mount to where the trans the reverb driver transformer would be. So that's going to be right here. Um, and then they, you know, the wires go to and from the RCAs up to the board, and you're good to go there. And it's pretty much in, in very close proximity to where these wires need to go. Again, making sure the leads are nice and short, no oscillation. Reverb is a very sensitive area. Talk to anyone that's built amps before and designing new layouts and such. Um, you know, I even encountered it with mine. I was, my basically, anytime I would have a strong uh, 5751 in the, in the reverb driver position, um, I would get into oscillation when my reverb send was a past two o'clock, two or three o'clock. But I went in with some chopsticks and I moved my wires around and sure enough, I was able to make the oscillation go away. And now I can put a 5751 tube in there, perfectly confident that it's not gonna oscillate uh, because I got that figured out. Um, that's pretty much it. Oh, one other big thing is I have a hole here now for the power. So there's gonna be a power, um, Ah, oh, what the heck is that called? Basically, you, you put the power cord in, it's a strain relief. So the strain relief is the word I was looking for. You, you pop the uh, power cord through, you wrap around the strain relief, and you plop it in, and then uh, that holds it securely in place. So if you ever worked on like a fender amp, they have these strain reliefs in there sometimes. Uh, I think they have a couple different designs. Um, I did shrink the 
AC outlet a little bit. So it fits really tightly around the Amphenol courtesy outlet. Other than that, it's pretty good. And here's the grand finale. Do you guys want to see it in a 3D world? All right, check this out. So here it is in all of its glory, 3D. Uh, here's the chassis. Um, to hopefully give you an idea of what this would look like in real life. Every time I see this, I, I just get more and more excited. Um, let's look around the bottom. Let's flip it over. And I made all these files available on my GitHub. So if you're into that sort of thing, you want to learn, or if you uh, basically, I'm lining up to do a chassis run. I don't know how big of a chassis run, but I'm going to do a chassis run. And if anyone out there is a fabricator and has a really good deal they, uh, for this project, I would absolutely love to do some business with you. I have someone lined up right now um, until I get the final confirmation that they're in to do the job. Uh, I'm still always looking. So definitely give me a ring. Give me a, a holler in the comments below if you're a metal fabricator and would love to take part in this open source project. I think that would be so cool to get some of that sort of uh, project from someone who saw my YouTube, has a metal shop, wants to participate. Heck, even get, you know, take one off the assembly line and give it to yourself. Um, Erwin and I are talking strategically about how to make those PCBs available for everyone, the printed circuit boards, uh, as a set. So sort of the plan is to offer a chassis and a circuit board uh, purchase option together. Uh, we're not sure if we're going to sell the circuit boards on their own, um, but we're still working out the details on pricing and whatnot. So if you're interested, you know, drop me a comment below and I'll keep you in mind and keep you informed and we'll start generating, I'll start generating kind of a list of people who are interested and, you know, if we get a decent down deposit while they're being fabricated um, and then the rest of the deposit after they're cut and delivered, we're good to go. So that's at least my thought right now. Uh, let me know what you guys think. I'm pretty excited about this project to continue to be excited about it, obviously. Um, yeah, I'm going to hang up now. And yeah, bye.